Hey everybody, it's Vicki here again at the with the Lavinia World Video Design Team. And today, um, I have a project in mind. However, I don't have like a sample to show you like I normally do. And then we kind of go through the steps. But I know that a lot of you and most of you have probably seen like the alcohol lift um, technique. And um, that's what I want to show you today. But I'm going to show you how or... Um, the way I make mine because no matter how hard I try I can't get those nice uh, kind of real fluid colors or the the mixes and stuff so I've chosen some colors we're going to use uh, purple twilight we are using um, aquamarine we are using pool and then we're going to use the pink sherbet and I've got um, just some uh, regular rubbing alcohol that we'll use for a little bit of blending and then, of course, we will use the alcohol lift transfer uh, solution. And then we will stamp um, a selection of the Lavinia stamps. And we'll do that in the VersaFine Claire in the Nocturne. And uh, we're going to make um, uh, a couple of lifts on this. I tend to lean towards the second lift on a project for whatever reason. Um, but I have made a few recently that you'll see um, on the blog team um, over the next few weeks. And then, of course, I've got my, um, oh, I don't even know what this tool is called, but we're going to use it. I've just got some pieces of felt that I've cut up um, so that we can move the ink around. Now, I know that um, some people, like I said, put a few drops down and then they use the solution to work it around. Try as I may, y'all, I just can't um, make that technique work for me. So let's get started. And I'm going to start with uh, a few drops of the Purple Twilight. And I'm just going to um, put a few drops um, or a couple little squiggle marks on my page just like that. And then I'm going to take the um, solution that I have. And I've just got a fine tip um, a needle. I'm not sure if you can see. That's not really a needle, but applicator. And I'm going to squirt that on there. Oh, and we're using Yuppo paper or Yuppo. I'm really not sure because I've heard it called both, but I refer to it as Yuppo paper. So you can see that the ink kind of moves it around and it shows the different layers and the colors. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my entire piece of paper. And it's going to give us this background um, that doesn't look like anything really. And... Um, we're going to let it set for just a second. So you can see that this one is saturated. I'm just going to take it off. Now if it dries enough when you're using it, there's no need to actually switch to a second piece um, if you go back to that same color. But because we're going to use some colors, here's how I like to do it. You can either put a few drops on the end of your applicator like that, or you can come through and actually kind of... Uh, Flick the drops out of the bottle, which is what I like to do. Gives it kind of a nice technique. And I just, there's no rhyme or reason. No big um, pattern, obviously. It can't get that effect um, as we kind of throw it on there. Try not to get your drops too big. It makes um, kind of a, a dark impression on the edge. But I'll show you how I've been able to fix that. You can also go through your paper, um, the places that it doesn't quite get, and just drop it it will immediately start to react with the Yuppo paper. Um, I've tried a few different brands. Obviously, Tim Holtz makes, um, uh, or Ranger has an alcohol ink uh, Yuppo paper. This is just a, a generic off-brand. Um, I don't even see the pad, so I can't tell you the color. But, so, that was our aquamarine, and now I'm going to go back through um, on top with the uh, pool party is the next one that we want to do and we're going to do the same technique you could also make a puddle of this on um, you know on your craft mat maybe or in a little dish and add some water to it and you could um, whoops that's a big drop there uh, flick it on with a fan brush or something like that but um, I think brushes get to be a bit of expensive and they don't really clean as well and the applicators we can actually you know throw away so now we've added our pool party before I go back in with our pink what I want to do is I just have a spray bottle and this is just um, plain alcohol and um, I take the 
the applicator out and I'm actually just going to flick it on and you see it immediately gives us some white space back on the paper to move with. And you can see what I was talking about. Do you see some of these little heavy lines here? It's because it was just a little bit heavier. That's okay, really. Um, on our second lift, you're not going to see that. So now I'm going to add the um, pink sherbet. And uh, again, I'm just going to flick. I think this one matches really well with the um, twilight. And then I'm going to leave the lid off of that one because now I'm going to take my Twilight and I'm actually going to put the drops on the end. You don't need a lot. It goes a long way. So I've got about, I don't know, a dozen maybe, not quite. And now I'm going to take my fine tip and I want to uh, not quite saturate my um, applicator. And I'm just going to go in and put some in random places and let it react. And that's how I kind of get rid of some of the harsh lines around. And I'll lift this up so you can see. Um, just kind of love this. One of the things that I struggle with when I'm making the backgrounds is when I make my cards, I literally make all of them um, as originals or from scratch, as it may be. And the reason I do that is because I think it gives each one um, something special and um it's just a lot of fun to work with. But then I'm making a background such as this and it ends up being something that I absolutely love. And I don't scan them so I can't duplicate them. And as I'm making um, pieces of art then I end up with a bunch that I can't sell or give away. And that makes it a little harder. And so it's a struggle. But making them is so much fun. And uh, you can just kind of get carried away with them. So all I've done, again, you can see it's actually picking up. It reacts really quickly. You get so much layer and dimension on it. I just love how it looks. And I know that um, there are probably some videos out there that tell you which ink that you can stamp on the Yuppo. I personally have never had any success with any kind of ink drying on top of a background. So I'm going to put the lids back on everything because if I spill it, it does stain. Um, you can see it all over my fingers because I make these a lot. Make sure they're tight. We're going to move those completely out of the way. I'm just going to get rid of some of this extra because I don't want it to end up on the project. Now, you can wear gloves if you want or something like that, but um, I don't. I just walk around with um, inky fingers all the time. So I'm going to hold this up close because I just want you to see all of those layers on there. So pretty. Okay, so now we are using, um, this is, it says, for re-inking Tim Holtz Alcohol Link Lift Ink Pad. Now this is a liquid, um, and so there is a pad that you can use and I actually stamp off. Um, again, I, I don't um, do an alcohol lift technique unless I'm doing this, so I haven't tried it, although I've seen um, others do it. It kind of looks like a resist. So now I've got two pieces of plain um, card paper. This is actually marker paper. I feel like um, the smoothness of it, um, you know, is what I use when I'm coloring with my Copics or, or alcohol uh, markers. And I just like the way it lifts because it's so smooth. So I've got two pieces because I like to do two lifts. Um, I feel like you get um, really two different views. So I'm going to put a, a nice line across the top. And then I'm going to take my brayer, just my roller, mine's the red rubber one. Um, and then I want to make sure that I can drag that all the way down. And you don't want to put too much pressure on it because it will pull the ink. You can see that happening. But I do want to make sure that I cover all of the paper or a lot of the dark spot is going to be left on there. So I went this direction that time and now I'm going to go back from the top because I want to make sure that I've got it. And this is where you can really see that ink starting to move. Okay. So now I'm, I'm going to take my piece of paper. I'm going to line it up. And um, I want to cover as much of the white paper as I get, can. 
on my marker paper because I don't want to waste any of this beautiful background. Then I'm going to take my brayer, and you can see already some of the ink that was left on the brayer, how it's going to pick this up. And I just want to make sure I roll it really well. And if we didn't get the um, lift all over, you'll see that on the paper. So now when I turn this over, look at the background. So now this is just on regular paper, and I'm, I'm going to be able to stamp on it. So this is our first lift, but don't waste this, right? So I'm going to put another line of our lift um, fluid here. I'm going to drag it down one more time. And I'm going to go back up because I just want to be sure I, I get as much out of this as I can. Okay, now I've got a nice fresh sheet of the marker paper that I'm using. Any cardstock will work. I just like this one the best. I'm going to cover it again, hold it in place so it doesn't kind of slide around and I'm going to brayer because I want it to pick up that ink. And now we've got another background. Um, it's just lighter so it's exactly the same. And so if you use the bigger sheet of card on this, depending on the size of your Yepo, we could even lift this again. I'm just not going to do that today because I think you're getting the idea now. But what I do want to show you, I'm going to move this out of the way, is I'm going to spritz my um, Yepo paper that I've been working with with um, just some alcohol. Now, obviously the alcohol ink is going to stain. It stains anything that it touches, to be honest with you. But I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to put it away. And so, and you guys are really shaking there. Sorry about that. So while it stains, I can reuse this piece. So just want to make sure there's nothing gooey on the bottom, no wet ink. And I'm going to put it to the side and, um, you know, I can use it. Um, I usually can get quite a few, but then don't forget to turn it over and use the back. So you can get quite a few backgrounds using one piece. So I'm going to move this off to the side. I am going to... I just use copy paper and lay it down. Um, keeps me from really having to clean my craft mat, and uh, although it is loved. And so I'm going to trim this down to a five by seven. Um, I'm actually going to cut it five and a quarter by five um, by seven and a quarter. So give me one second. I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So out of my piece, I had a few pieces of scrap on it, but you can see I was able to get um, two five by seven um, nice cuts out of my sheet of paper. So I'll either be able to use this, um, I could cut it down and make a couple of card tops for it, um, which I do sometimes when I'm making the, the project. I will um, make a, as a gift a framed piece and then a matching card to go with it. But I'm going to save this for two backgrounds. So I'm going to move this one off to the side. And for today's project, we're going to use this piece. And I just want to move my light back again. Just want to show you. So just look at all those little bubbles and ink in there. And it's smooth. It's dry. So we're not going to have anything, any residue off of that. So now what we're going to do is I've already lined up the tree. So we're going to use the Spellbound Fairy the wild hair set, the tree of wisdom, and the lunar lights. And I'm going to stamp all of those in black. And um, I've already lined the tree up, so let's just move this over I'm using my stamping platform. And um, I think what I'm going to do is... The hardest part is deciding where you want everything. So I'm going to put the darker at the top. So the darker colors that um, went to, you know, the more kind of um, saturation in that section, I'm going to put those um, at the top here. So I've lined up my tree. Let me move my extra stamps here. I put them on the top so I don't lose them. Um, I also have a laminated sheet of paper where I put my stamps 
uh, when I'm done with them for the project, but it is being wiped off and uh, I didn't bring it up from the sink. So I've already lined my tree up here and um, I'm gonna ink this up. I did just re-ink my VersaFine Claire. So again, it's the Nocturne. I'm gonna ink this tree up. And because it's nice and wet, probably only need to stamp it twice, but this background is just a tad dark. So um, I'll probably do it twice just to be sure that I get it. I got a lot of ink on the side here. It's really wet. And I don't want that to get on my paper when I press down. So let's try this one more time. All right, I'm going to push this down on our paper. I'm going to give it a nice press everywhere. Let it soak in, because remember you're putting layers of ink on, and this is wet, so I know it's going to stay wet for a second. Let's see what we got. A really nice impression. So this didn't move, I don't think. Nope. But I do want to give it one more, because I want it to be um, super crisp. Now, you could, lam uh, not laminate, sorry, you could um, emboss if you wanted to, to get that, but um, because we're going to be adding some stamps around it, I didn't want them to not be able to lay flat on the paper. Okay, I am happy with that. I'm going to leave this in here. Actually, let me turn this around first so you can see it. And just look at it on the on the color. I mean, so really the tree is so pretty. You could just leave that as your project. But I'm going to remove the tree. Again, that's the tree of wisdom. And um, now I'm going to put the hairs down where I want them. And let's decide which direction we want. Um, I'll definitely have everything linked for you. so that you'll be able to pick these up and put them in your cart. And she actually faces this way, so we need to do it more like this. This is the Spellbound Fairy, and so when you stamp her, she faces to the right, and I think, hmm, I think I'm only going to use two of our hairs for this one because I, I'm afraid I won't get enough of her on it and she's too pretty to not highlight. Okay, so we are here. I'm going to try to stamp all of these at one time just to save us a little bit of time. There we go. All right, so we're gonna line this back up. Use your magnets. You'll be sorry. Don't wanna have this great background and then double stamp. And again, my ink pad is super wet because I just re-inked it. And uh, the tip that I like to share with you guys for everybody that's new and haven't heard me say it yet, is that um, if you've got a drier ink pad and you don't have a way to re-ink it, that's okay. Try to get as much paper or ink down on the paper as you can and use a Sharpie marker. Unless you are using some kind of alcohol ink, like an archival ink, um, to stamp with in the first place, because then your Sharpie marker is going to react with that ink. All right, so I know this is gonna pull the paper this time, so I wanna put my finger in just to hold it. And lucky for us, we actually got a really nice clear image, so hopefully I'm not going to get my feelings hurt, but I want to ink them up just one more time. Just to get that really dark crisp. Print. Alright, we're here just a little bit. Fantastic. Okay, so let me show you all this. Let me put my scrap paper in here so they don't get on my pad. 
Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way for you. Look at that. Just pops right off the page. And while the background is just um, bright and, and mystical and um, fantastical, you still focus on these stamps. So I'm going to turn this to the side. And now we're going to use the Lunar Buds, which is this one. They get a really nice detail. And I'm going to stamp them using um, an acrylic block because I'm just going to put them over the page and I know that my ink pad is wet enough to do that. So I'm just going to line it up on here. Make sure it's on. Okay. Got my ink pad and I'm just going to ink it up. Now, the tough thing with the acrylic blocks is that we want to make sure we don't rock on the ink. So now I can put this anywhere on my project that I want to. I'm going to have some hang just a little bit lower. So we have so many of them. And this is going to leave a great impression because I know it's nice and wet. And we'll do some, you know, give it some dimension or, uh, you know, depth on there by just stamping in different places. Or different links, I guess, is the best way to put that. Now, if you're going to try to center yours, the only thing I can tell you with that is um, just make sure, I guess you don't really have to measure it. You just want to be sure that it ends up being, um, you know, you have enough to where it's not kind of uneven, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. And then I'm going to stamp just a little on the end here, and I'm going to fill in just a little bit of this empty space right there. And again, right here. Maybe just a touch there. Perfect. Okay. That's it. You have literally created um, just a super fabulous um, background. I'm going to put this in a black frame. I'll put it on this black piece of paper so you kind of get the idea and seeing just how wonderful that is. It's going to look great. Now, what I will do is I'm probably going to add um, some kind of embellishment. I'll probably do that typical um, kind of halo that you see um, on the projects. I just don't have a circle cut big enough, um, but I will do that. And then I'm going to add probably, um, I use mica powder on my circles or maybe a little glitter. Um, I will probably do something around with her wings and uh, have a little bit of fun with this project. And with these little spots right here, I can get um, out, let me show you, um, if you use, let's see, let's do this one because it's blue. This is the, um, what is this one called? Can we see a color on this one? This is, it just says, oh, it's the Jewel Drops um, from Nouveau, the Sea Breeze, but it dries translucently. And uh, what I will do is, I'm only going to do one or two because I want to go in and finish this project after we finish. And, and then when I take the picture to promote the video, you'll be able to see the finished project. But if I come in here and I put just a little drop there, it will um, give it some dimension. Do you see that drop right there? And... Um, it will actually not pick up the color in the sense that it lifts the color, but it will almost mimic and it's going to get a little bit on that brighter blue. But I'm going to take that off for now because I want to be able to finish my project. And uh, so take a look. If you have any questions about the colors that I used, 
Um, I will list those in the video or in the comments and uh, the stamps will definitely be linked to. So head out to Lavinia World and um, pick up some new um, fairy stamps and, and give it a try. Just play with it. Um, alcohol ink is very forgiving um, until you transfer it. So uh, keep that in mind. But don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, share your projects with us out on the Lavinia World Facebook page and uh, try to join one of our challenges. I'll see everybody real soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.